to the hot hell darkness. Your room is ready, child. Enjoy your stay. Hey, fairies. Flighty creatures of diminished stature, weighing in at six and a half nanograms, with a reach no longer than a chewed matchstick, the wingspan of an aphid, and the body mass of a banana prawn. It sounds crazy that they could threaten the life of a human being, but size isn't everything. And if you've got mischief, magic, extensive topiary skills, a natural gift for dancing, and the ability to plug power tools into your limbs, that's pretty much all you need to be in charge. This is the Visitor's Book, where all the grisly tales of all my wicked guests are written down. Want to see why one of these bad children is down here? This is Peace Biscuit's story. I call it The Hair Fairies. There was once a manor house called Little Babylon which was famous throughout the world for its sculpted boxwood edges. It was owned by a man known as the Hippie Lord because of his long flowing hair. The rest of his family had beautiful hair too. His wife, Sunrise, and his only son, Peace Biscuit, a spoilt child who thought about nothing else but his own beauty. Do you think Hair Low magazine would like to do a feature on my luscious locks? I bet you don't know why you have such lovely hair. It's natural selection. There has to be one peacock with a lovelier fantail than the rest, and it just happens to be me who's perfect, yeah? That's not quite true. You were given your hair by the hair fairies. Fairies? What, with wings and stuff? Hard to say. I've never seen them. Hair fairies only appear if a person's been bad, and then only to punish them. I wish they'd appear for me. Trust me, you'll never want to see a hair fairy. Which was advice Peace Biscuit would have done well to listen to. When his sister, Moon Buggy, was born, with an even more beautiful head of hair than his own, that had wig makers rushing from around the world to outbid each other for a snip. Not for sale, I'm afraid. The worm of jealousy gnawed into the center of Peace Biscuit's heart and turned it to stone. Happy uh, birthday. Do you want to know what I've got you? Oh, yes, please. Well, this may come as a shock, but the hair fairies think your hair has made you, uh, a bit boring because you spend all your time looking after it. You mean they don't want me to brush it anymore? Or wash it, or cream it, or, or do anything to make it look nicer. But why would the hair fairies want me to mess up their gift? Shall we, uh, ask them? Are they here? Uh, can't you see them on my shoulder? No. They're, um, waving. Are they? Oh, why can't I see them? I want to see them. It's my birthday. And that's my present. To see the fairies? Yeah, they've told me that if you have fun with your hair, they'll let you see them. Oh, I want to do it now. OK, but there's um, one condition. What? You can't tell anyone that I helped you. Why not? Because, you know, the hair fairies have to think it's you having fun with your own hair. Uh, if they even suspect that I helped you... What? They'll do you in. Do me in? Fairies? With a poisoned dart. Not realising the trap that had been set for her, Moonbuggy trustingly followed her brother into the bathroom, where he helped her to condition her beautiful hair with mud and snails, wash it with lumpy custard, rinse it in cold gravy, and then tie it into knots. Ow! Oh, it looks like a giant ogre with a runny tummy bug has thrown up over my head. Yes, but they're laughing. The hair fairies. Can you still not see them? Not yet. Won't be long now. They think what you've done is really funny, but it kind of doesn't go far enough. 
They want me to go further? Yeah, they want you to get bald. They say that would be really funny. <laughs> Good idea, hair fairies. But won't Mummy and Daddy be cross if I cut all my hair off? Not when you tell them the hair fairies told you to do it. They'll pat you on the back and cheer things like bravo and hurrah. Really? Moon Buggy, where are you? Quick, they're coming. We've got a big surprise for you. And she's got one for you, too. Ta-da! <gasps> Moon Buggy. What have you done? Aren't you going to cheer? Cheer? Bad, Moon Buggy. Leave the house and never come back. Be gone, you naughty hair chopper. I'm the only child our parents love now. But you told me to. She's hysterical. She doesn't know what she's saying. Remember what the hair fairies will do to you if you say I helped. But you did help. You said the fairies wanted me to do it and that I'd see them when I had. Me? She's lying, Daddy. Or you are, Peace Biscuit. Are you jealous of your sister's hair? No. I warned you that if you disrespected the hair fairy's gift, they would take their revenge. Like I'm really scared of a fairy. You should be. Why? Oh, whoops. Sorry, little fairy. I've just trodden on your head. You have ruined little Babylon. Everything we have is thanks to those fairies, and now they will leave. Now you're talking nonsense. Just answer this question. I've got lovely hair, she's got none. Do you like me more than Moon Buggy? No. Right now, I think we like you less. That did it. After everything he'd done to make his parents love him, like me less? I'll give them a real reason to like me less. In under ten minutes, the hippie lord's work lay in ruins. Boxwood sculptures smashed, splintered and destroyed. East Biscuit had exacted a terrible revenge. <laughs> The sound of a pipe and drum made him swing round. Marching out of the meadow was an army of fairies. They were wearing black caps and carrying a coffin, which was lowered into a hole. On top, they planted an uncut bush. It was only when the warrior fairies had reshaped the bush with their bionic cutters that the boy recognised the face of the hedge sculpture. It was him. And this was his funeral. If you can see us, you have been bad. If you have been bad, you must be punished. I never touched my hair. You tricked your sister into cutting hers. It was an accident! For 40 years, your father has allowed us to use his garden as our burial ground. You mean it isn't my father who shapes the hedges? It's you carving headstones for your dead? And in return, we gave his family the most beautiful hair in the world. But you have dishonoured our dead by destroying their graves. Now we must leave little Babylon while you must remain as a warning to all who would follow your path. Peace Biscuit tried to scream, but his lips would not move. When they found him in the morning, he had been petrified into wood. And a warning had been carved into his chest. Do not cross a hairy fairy. We may be small, but we ain't half scary. Wouldn't life be so much better if all children were made of wood? Instead of being such a pain to live with, they could be turned into useful household objects, such as banister spindles, or loo seats, or logs. <laughs>